Um, Carolyn, so, so my issue is that our server is down and I don't have access to any of my files at the moment, including the agenda and all the okay. important things that I'm supposed to say at the beginning of a meeting. <laughs> well, how about if I, I can put that um, on, I can screen share that. Perfect. Um, so let's see, zoom window. And I'm gonna let comp guest in. I don't know who that is. Um, Probably Joe. Okay. Let's hold on, let's see. I don't see my participant list. Okay, I oh here we go. So do you want me to officially open the meeting or you want to wait a few more minutes? Um, I think we could go ahead and start after this person gets finished connecting to audio. Okay. Can you see that um, on your end, Elon? No. no. Okay. Um, oh, I can see. Maybe not. Well, you can go ahead and get started, I think. Looks like this person's having trouble connecting. Okay. Um, welcome. This is the Central Business Architecture Committee meeting on Tuesday, August 2nd. Um, today, we don't have any projects in front of us. Um, we're going to have a presentation about um, historic preservation plans um, that the city has been working on with Barrett Planning Group. Um, before we get started, I don't think we have any public members that have anything to talk about other than the agenda items. Is that true? I don't see any. Okay. Nope. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to you, Kathy, I think. Yes. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you again for uh, for meeting uh, in this kind of interim format. Um, my name is Kathy Broomer, and I'm delighted to be on the team working with uh, Barrett Planning Group on the preparation of the Historic Preservation Plan document. Um, I'm an architectural historian and a preservation planning consultant, and I've been working in Massachusetts for 35 years uh, with cities and towns and uh, local and state historical commissions, um, basically on how to enhance a community's uh, historic character while at the same time encouraging the necessary growth and change. And uh, Barrett Planning Group is headed up by Judy Barrett. Uh, she is a planner and a housing policy analyst and uh, also been around for 35 years in Massachusetts and formed her consulting firm in 2017. So members of her team uh, who are working with us on the plan are uh, community planners, Carly Vendetti and Jill Slankus. And I, uh, they send their regrets. They had a, a competing uh, meeting in another town uh, this evening. But as part of our uh, fact-finding tasks for the preservation planning component of the uh, Sustainable Northampton, um, We'll be implementing, uh, there's a significant public engagement uh, process that we'll be implementing in the fall, but at the front end, we wanted to be sure to touch base with uh, your committee and get your thoughts on historic preservation and development issues uh, in the central business district generally and the uh, new central business core uh, district in particular. So our team is uh, reviewing the form, the new form-based code. And Carolyn has sent us uh, the latest version of the revised design guidelines. So we, we understand that that's still happening and being finalized. Um, we've also taken a look at some of your agendas over the last couple of years and 
some of your meeting recordings to try to get a, a better sense of the sort of things that you're uh, that are coming before you. So I believe that Carolyn sent along some uh, by email some of the questions that we had to to get your thoughts, which um, we can go through now unless you had any questions for me or wanted to bring anything to my attention first. Yeah. I actually want to say that I was remiss and I didn't forward those questions on because in my head when I read it, I was thinking they were for me and that you were going to ask the committee in this okay. forum. So I'd be happy to put the questions on the screen or if you have them and you want to put them up or if you just want to shoot from, you know, um, I think these guys are pretty quick on their feet anyway. So <laughs> um, it probably won't be too difficult to get oh, that, responses. That's totally fine. Um, why don't we go through them actually from uh, the most general type of question to the most specific. Um, one thing we were wondering, and again, this is really for our fact finding, um, are there any trends that you're seeing in the nature of the applications that you receive or general building activity downtown or the technical assistance that you've been providing um, in, in the last few months that you would like to make sure we take note of in the preservation plan? I would say in general, we it's been relatively slow in terms of proposals relevant to any preservation work, right? right. Yeah, we generally, uh, in the, I'm just trying to think back in the last couple of meetings that we've had have primarily been around new buildings uh -huh. and not not too much in terms of renovations of existing or historic structures. Okay. Um, and if it, oh. I, I would say that every project that we've had has been so different that you can't really talk about trends very well. Okay, fair enough. Um, I, I will say just sort of one thought that pops into my head is, is conversations about the central business district and um, and how contemporary or modern architecture fits in with a historic downtown. Mm -hmm. And that's something that uh, obviously is desirable, but you know it, it's a balance that you are wrestling with. Um, I think it's come up on a couple of. Uh, it, I think it's come up as questions from the public on a couple of projects. Um, you know, are we uh, bound to require that new buildings in particular adhere to the sort of um, historic details in the guidelines? That makes sense. Okay, right. I mean, this committee is is we are, you know, um, the ones that are trying to guide new projects so that they fit into the fabric of the historic downtown. Um, and that's why we have the guidelines. Right. But at the same time, you're not seeking to Disneyfy uh, downtown or Canton. Right. Right. Hey, Kathy, I'm sorry. Your um, organization, is it a program or is it a, is it a private entity or a committee? I'm, I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, well, I'm, wor I'm working on a team with uh, Barrett Planning Group. So uh, I'm a, an independent preservation planning consultant and Barrett is a uh, planning consulting firm. And I what are your goals? Oh, oh, go Sorry. ahead, go ahead, Carolyn. I'm sorry, I just, I realized, yeah, maybe some more background information to fill in some of those pieces and where you all fit into this. Um, I um, have done that at the, at the front end. So the city, um, as part of um, filling in the gaps of the sustainable Northampton plan, we didn't have a fully formed historic preservation component. And so the historical commission had really been interested in doing a plan and having a sense of, you know, as you know, you've 
read in the paper, you've seen things come before you about um, demolition projects and then controversies focused on certain structures that are coming down versus what's being replaced. And so um, there is a, there's a regulatory component that addresses some of these things under the Historic, Commission, Historic Commission's jurisdiction, but it's, um, they, there weren't any clear policy directions or um, a framework from which the commission could work um, in terms of sorting through those questions that come up. It was just sort of going from one fire to another one um, to address these issues. And so um, there has, was funding put aside through CPA funding. The Historical Commission really wanted to do this historical um, preservation component and create, um, you know, the policy guidance um, for the city and for the work that they do. And so, um, can you, can you through, because so through the it? funding, the city hired um, Barrett Planning Group was a successful bidder for the planning for developing this plan and working with the city to do the public outreach to work with the community, all of the committees, and. Um, Kathy is part of that consultant team that's doing this work um, on behalf of the Historical Commission. And so this is one piece of it is sort of trying to, uh, as part of the information gathering, as Kathy described at the beginning, this is one component of it. And so it's just, so we're using, the, and they are using the summer to do information gathering before going to start with public outreach because they really came on board just at the beginning of the summer and it didn't make sense to try to start with public outreach and so their studying was sort of starting with background um, data and information gathering so that's why they're in front of you tonight and so this will be continued like this is just sort of the starting point um, of the process and one of the reasons why we wanted to uh, connect with your committee um, up front, uh, we have met with the Historical Commission, um, but we wanted to make sure we uh, spoke directly to um, anybody or any uh, commission or committee that uh, has some sort of review authority over, um, for example, demolition um, in the city and uh, the Historical Commission has review uh, for demolition, but then they also act as the city's historic district commission. So that was uh, two functions uh, with one commission, but we wanted to make sure that we touch base with, with uh, your committee as well. Yeah, I would, I would definitely read the guidelines. Those we went over quite thoroughly and that'll explain what the committee's about. And also I would look online to, um, to refresh your memory I'll, I'll quick mention that, you know, we have a landscape architect that owns her own firm. We have a builder who owns his own company, uh, an architect that owns her, the principal of the firm. Right. And uh, um, a prominent uh, um, business owner from downtown. Right. And um, so that's your audience that you're up against. And, my observation when uh, everyone speaks is they really talk about the things that, you know, that they, um, you know, that their expertise is. So like if, if Elan is speaking, she'll be focused on, you know, the facades that, that are similar to the downtown. Right. And we try to reflect those elements that are in the downtown. And that's explained in also in the, uh, guidelines. So, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you hear tonight, it, it's probably going to be uh, reflected in those guidelines. Right. Thank you. And also uh, the interdisciplinary uh, nature of everybody's experience on the committee reflects the fact that, uh, yeah. you know, design review is not one, uh, one single focus. Um, yeah. Well, do you find, I mean, recognizing that the design guidelines are still being adjusted after the passage of the form-based code downtown, um, do any of you have any concerns uh, with the chapter 156 regulation or the administrative procedures that, again, that you would like to see uh, addressed in the, in the planning document? 
Um, I think we've been doing that. They, the form-based code uh, took our guidelines and incorporated them all pretty much. Is, right. is that correct, Carolyn? Could, is that safe to say? Yeah, I mean, that was definitely the framework that was put forward as sort of um, the evaluation and process and tools for um, the other parts of the district that now have been sort of subdivided so that the planning board has those and will use those. I think one, um, I, I just want to make a, a general comment if uh, people have background noise, if you could mute while you're not, if you're not speaking. Um, I missed a little bit of what Carolyn was saying earlier. Um, one of the things about historic preservation, and you probably are aware that uh, sometimes a, a prominent historic structure, structure, like a church perhaps, may need to come down because it's structurally um, in bad shape and the cost to renovate it is much higher than the current owner potentially wants to spend on it. But it obviously has a lot of um, um, emotional connections for people in town. Um, you know, families, generations who have attended that uh, or been a part of that building, it, it has a lot of meaning. And so it's a struggle definitely for this committee to look at a proposed project to replace something like that and make a judgment about it. Um, you know, it's easy to make a judgment that it is meeting the guidelines to say, yes, the new design meets the guidelines, but to make the judgment about taking down a historic structure. Right, right. right. And I feel like our guidelines are, and maybe that's perhaps what this is all about, is giving us a little more guidance on that. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I think to add on to that, um, it's, it's not even just about buildings and demolition, also repair to existing buildings. I know um, we looked at a, a church on King Street and you know whether or not the steeple should be replaced. And the church really wanted to just take it down because it was gonna be expensive to replace it. And that that also feels a little bit like a, like a gray area. I think we want to, um, support you know local business owners and property owners and and be supportive of the improvements that they're trying to make to their properties while at the same time being responsible to the the look the aesthetic and the history of the structures so i think i think that's a careful balance that sometimes feels hard to hard to strike that's really helpful thanks um one concern um, that I, in particular, have perhaps more than some other members of the committee is the way that, that the district was divided up in the form-based code so that the, the, our, the area of purview that our committee um, has jurisdiction over is actually a little bit less than it uh, was before because um, a part of the Central Business District was taken out of our area of purview. Um, and my, my specific concern was um, that it doesn't really go up as far on King Street as it should, um, because you know, I think it's likely, you know, not in the next five years, but it's likely that in the next, maybe the next 20 years, that the central business, that, that King, King Street, um, could have more of the feel of downtown than it does right now. Okay. Um, because and there's, you know, there's a large project being proposed to replace um, where Pat Goggins' office is, and that project has been taken out of our purview. And, and I think it's close enough to Main Street that it makes sense that it should still be in our purview. I, I uh, you know. And that battle's already been lost, but it's it's something that was a concern to us, to me at least. Okay, thank you. You know, another thing, if um, I'm not quite sure, Carolyn, you'll be able to answer this probably, but is there a sequence as far as which committee reviews first? 
because if that's if there's a requirement, then I suggest the historic commission goes first before the CBAC, um, just because of you know if it's a historical building which is I believe classified over 25 years old, then it, it, I mean if it's a building that's over 25 years old, then it's classified as being a historic building. We don't have jurisdiction to you know to uh, hold the um, the judgment will say, for lack of a better term, for a year, but the uh, historic commission does. So that's why I would rather hear from them first and then we come second. So, well, just to clarify, the way that the, when the Central Business Architecture Committee was created in 1999, I think it was 2000, um, um, the own the the um, historical commission um, review of demolition of buildings was was purposefully um, left out in favor of central business architecture committee reviewing demolitions and that would be the only place where there might have been dual jurisdiction so the historical commission doesn't review anything that's in the central business district even okay. if it weren't a demolition yeah um and so the um well what's happened now is with the um reduction in the size of the central business um architecture committee's um geographic jurisdiction means there's an expansion also of the historical commission's jurisdiction for demolition of buildings so there were two committees in the city, right, that reviewed demolition of buildings. It was either the Historical Commission or the Central Business Architecture Committee. Oh. And because of those boundary changes, the, mm -hmm. the jurisdiction also changed with it. We wrote that into the ordinance. Um, so there wouldn't be a, a time in which the Historical Commission could potentially review first versus Central Business Architecture. Is, is there um, any opportunity if, if central business architecture receives an application for total demolition and it's for a building that's pre-1945, uh, pre um, is there currently an opportunity where you, like Melissa was saying, uh, kind of Overlap. get some feedback from the historical commission just on their opinion? Or um, I understand there's, they're strictly speaking, they don't have the jurisdiction over it. Um, but is that something that you've done or that you'd like to be able to do? They they have written us letters, you know, okay. of opinion on a project. Okay. Um, you know, the, the hearings are public and they are generally very aware of uh, all the historic buildings in, in Northampton. So right. they know when something, and I don't know if they're officially notified of that, Carolyn, or if they're just on their own aware of something happening yeah i mean this we certainly don't um send out specific notice to the commission but most uh, um yes there that information gets out there but it's not sent directly from our office and kathy um just so you know we aren't allowed to i don't know if the word is deliberate um before a meeting, but I know we can't deliberate before or after. We don't discuss anything uh, about the the um, the hearing between each other. Right, right. And and when I was uh, um, asking about input from the historical commission, I didn't mean um, to suggest informal input, but rather. Um, do they, you know, as you were saying, uh, do they formally submit uh, a letter saying we're aware of this demolition and here's what our thoughts are as, as a commission? It sounds like they do. So uh, that's that's great to close that loop if you're if you're indicating that as a as a committee, sometimes there's a question about, well, you know, how should we proceed in terms of preserving, you know, what we can of a historic uh, property? or a significant historic property. And I'll, I mean, as an example, another example of this also involving a church that um, 
I think just in yesterday's or today's paper, you know, the look back in history to uh, describe the demolition of the parish hall or something on King Street. Remember the 1800, um, Alan and Bob and Joe, you were on the committee then for the King Street Church where they demoed that historic um, building that was the, I think it was the parish hall, is that right? Um, but at any rate, at that time, the Historical Commission did um, recommend steps to take in preserving um, historical artifacts and um, mm -hmm. um, photo documentation and recommended, I think that the Central Business Architecture Committee write that into their decision, if I recall correctly. So that was another that, example of a time at which the that, Historical Commission recommended. That did not come before us. That came only before the Historical Commission. And I'm pretty sure they imposed a year delay on the demolition. That was in front of the Central Business Architecture Committee um, um, as well. I so, I, um, I but the line so, was my, right there in the in the in the, um, the um, that you may be thinking of the other building on the other side because they took down two buildings, uh, um, and one building was Historical Commission, and the other uh, one was just Central right, Business. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah but the they, historic one was the the more historic one was the underground railroad one came under was, the the historical commission's jurisdiction right that was the house the um pastor's house rectory right. yes okay and then as uh also with uh with the chapter 156 with the ordinance it exempts certain types of projects from review. And we were wondering, have there uh, been any instances uh, where you felt that exempt projects, and you don't necessarily have to name specific addresses, but uh, did any exempt projects end up, in the committee's view, detracting from the character of the streetscape? And, and if so, um, do you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see to avoid this in the future? Well, one, one that comes to mind, um, because I was walking around downtown this weekend, is uh, the uh, cannabis uh, retail shops that have come to downtown. You know, they, there's a requirement that they cannot, you cannot look into their shops, which is a direct conflict to our guidelines, which talk about a certain amount of glazing and the idea of you know, seeing activity that, you know, inside also activates the street. Um, so uh, there are ways to at least, maybe you can't see all the way through, but you can still see light and movement behind glazing without seeing product. Um, and uh, I am curious about how some of those projects have gotten approved in town without our review. Okay. Some of them have had a review. Well, the, the, the one on Pleasant, we did review the one on Pleasant Street in the old gas station. And, mm -hmm. and we, there was nothing we could do about it because of the regulations about not being able to see inside. If I remember correctly, the only things that are actually exempt from our purview are state government, or state or federal government buildings. And I don't, there, I don't think the state has done any kind of project that would have come before us. Um, but it is ironic that the worst piece of architecture in the entire downtown is a state building. <laughs> Andy won't oppose that demolition, I assume, when it comes. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I'm hoping that's going to be part of the RFP for that when the city sells the property is that the first thing they have to do is demolish it. <laughs> Which is a new twist on the way you would normally operate, right? <laughs> Clear the well, site Kathy, I don't first. Know, I don't know if you're familiar with this building, the old registry of deeds, but yeah. it's a hideous. <laughs> yes. And it's... Of, uh, uh, the boundaries of the uh, central business core uh, were 
were um, drawn in such a way that 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 property that parcel that actually is... originally they were going to exclude it, but we uh, due to our protest they actually put it back in under mm -hmm. our dis our jurisdiction. Okay, who's they? <laughs> Who are they? You, actually, I guess <laughs> the planning department. We re the our committee requested, and the planning department <laughs> compromised. Right. <laughs> and so, aside from the cannabis, so is that a state regulation that they that you yes. can't yeah. see inside them? Well, yeah, you know. So. so here's the thing that really bothers me. Is I mean, I think there's what Elon alluded to is. I think it's the interpretation of the CCC of the regulation. Mm -hmm. Reading the regulations, it says you can't, the product can't be visible. Okay. But I think it's just easier for them to say, nope, you can't look in the windows. Don't show me anything where you can see in the windows. Right. And so there's, you know, as an example, and we don't need to belabor this, but I just, because you, um, Alon, you asked, there's, you know, Balagon ha has shades inside the windows, so they didn't really block. I mean, we don't have a regulation against shades, but um, it's it's definitely, um, you know, there's a lot of put. There's there's a window on Strong Avenue that they're still supposed to come before you, but they went ahead and put the film on. I think already, or they ordered the glass, and um, we told them they couldn't put it in. So it's been a struggle for sure. Um, pushing back on um, the retailers about this um, um, conflict. Okay, that's that's interesting and definitely a a new um, new concern that didn't exist even a few years ago. Um, well, and I think it does historically change the way that people interact on the street. You don't have the connection to the buildings. In the way that you used to when you could visibly see into the space right um, or acknowledge at least that there was some light and activity happening in that space it's very okay. unfriendly to walk past an opaque wall right right um is that, is that something that that uh i don't recall from the revised design uh design guidelines I, that's i guess it's not something that you're you're able to specifically address in the design it's guidelines. It's not addressed in the guidelines. Well, we talk about a, a certain percentage of glazing. I don't think and we transparency. About, but we do have transparency listed there. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Um, and then also um, in the preservation plan document, We'll be making very specific recommendations on how um, the city should update its historic properties inventory, which um, you're probably all familiar with. It's uh, online through Historic Northampton and it's over at Forbes Library. Um, and the, the state, the Mass Historical Commission has a, an online version as well. Um, we're aware that anomaly buildings are identified in your or called out in the design guidelines in that new grid that's been developed, which is uh, seems very helpful. Um, what we're wondering is to assist in the review of those buildings, especially if they're single story buildings that predate 1945, would you be interested in updated inventory information for those, uh, those properties? Or do you basically just not really consult the inventory and pretty much just go with uh, um, what the application materials and photographs and the site visit uh, tell you about about a particular property. Well, definitely the latter. I mean, I don't think we have referred to that list as long as I remember being on this committee. Right. Right. You know, so. Well, I, I think I think when we get a report from the city, they identify it. From that, but I don't think that the committee dives into that necessarily, okay. that database. But I think the city the planning department uses it. Right, right. And definitely for uh, demolition. Um, we just noticed that uh, some of the buildings um, on Pleasant Street, especially, are not well documented in the city's inventory and didn't know whether 
it would be at all useful to your committee to have some discussion in the inventory forms of what features of those buildings uh, are of historic value and worth worth considering um, if someone were to plan to uh, renovate or expand those properties. Um, I think it's always helpful to have a third party, especially someone who specializes in historic um, buildings, provide an opinion. That's definitely helpful okay. to have that data. Okay, great. Um, and so is there uh, anything uh, just with the application process, which I, I know is, is uh, managed um, by Carolyn, um, but in terms of when uh, applications come to you as a committee, is there anything about the application process that, uh, that could stand improvement? Um, it, uh, and maybe Carolyn, I, I don't know if, uh, if you find that applicants are you know, consistently confused about what they need to um, submit uh, for the committee's review, or or do you all find that that things are pretty well defined and and applicants uh, generally uh, get you the materials that you need in order to co conduct a complete review? I don't think it's unique to the Central Business Architecture Committee. <laughs> I think almost any application process, the most applicants forget or don't address some of the required submittal materials. And, um, um, you know, there's some important ones that sometimes get um, left off for the um, Central Bazaar Picture Committee, especially if it's a smaller project and there's not a hired professional designer right. on, on, on the team. That's right. when it's a little bit, and we try to be flexible. You know, we, we want to make sure that we're not closing anybody out of the process for financial reasons. And so we try to um, provide other alternatives for people to submit enough information so the committee can understand what's going on, but it doesn't always hit the mark. Yeah. And um, so it, I think to some extent there will always be a balancing act between um, trying to make sure that we're, um, we're not creating barriers for people who don't have the same resources as other um, right. um, entities that are applying. Okay. I mean, we only see those applications once they've been reviewed by the planning department and the building department. I'm just curious, Carolyn, do you kick back a lot of things to submittals and help them fine tune them or make them more yeah. specific? Yes. And sometimes I get to a point where I can't ask for any more and I need help from the committee to tell the person that they need to really submit. But many times we, I mean, we sort of have um, an approach of saying, you're not ready to go on the agenda. If you really want to be on the agenda, you better get me X, Y, and Z. Well, please get me X, Y, and Z. And then um, we'd be happy to put you on the agenda. Um, so we have used the advertising deadline as a as a, a tool to help us facilitate um, submittal of those um, required plans. Okay, that's that's good to know. Um, I I think uh, three out of fifteen, in my experience, have hit it out of the park. So <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. you know you can imagine how much of a struggle and it's a cool it's a cool application because it does like Bob said it does go to the building department and Carolyn provides her recommendation and so you know my eye goes right to the recommendations and then I go back and study what's on um like the links and go online and study what's um what is what is that um public information called um, oh, the public file cabinet um, site? Is that what I, you're yeah, referring to? I think so, yeah. yeah. And so that's where they're filed um, prior prior to our meetings. So then we get to study up on it. So that approach is good. That process is good. 
right, right. Okay. Um, did you have any questions for me about the preservation plan, how it, or the planning component of the comprehensive plan in terms of how it unfolds? I, I might have missed a, a timeline. Was there, do you have, what's your basic timeline and, and goals? Um, we have right now the rough timeline, we're uh, finishing up uh, the first phase, which was a lot of the uh, uh, historic context, uh, reviewing ordinances, um, uh, let me see. Historic context, reviewing ordinances, uh, evaluating the, the city's historic properties inventory and existing uh, National Register of Historic Places and, and the local historic district. Um, and just sort of getting the, the lay of the land and also developing uh, a draft of the community um, engagement plan. And then uh, phase two will finish uh, around November. So we anticipate having uh, the community engagement occur this fall um, once everyone is back in town. And uh, phase three with the recommendations that get developed that grow out of the, um, the community engagement, that's targeted for the end of December. Um, so ultimately the, the preservation planning component um, of the comprehensive plan should be ready by March. Um, but those are the, those are the major, uh, phases. Great. And I guess my other question is, will, will you be coming back to make a presentation to this committee of your sort of findings or results or, or is it more of a public thing? Um, I, I have to check on that and we'll coordinate with, um, with Carolyn. Uh, I'm not sure yet on the uh, timing of that. I know that we do have uh, two public forums and one of them is to present findings um, to anyone who wants, who wants to come. So I believe that that uh, would be, does that sound right, Carolyn? Um, yeah, I mean, in fact, we're we have a meeting. I think we're trying to set up a meeting this week to sort of formalize the public right. engagement part of the entire thing. So we haven't quite um, fine tuned that yet to know. But I think the um, the idea probably would be to have a couple of um, potentially bigger forums. But it, all, it also, you know, the Historical Commission is going to want sort of um, their own focus forum. So we might do one or two smaller ones. Yeah. We just haven't quite figured that out. Okay. And uh, I mean, I, I have to say that last October, I was in Northampton for the first time since the pandemic had started. And at the time, I wasn't aware that uh, the city was even starting this preservation planning process and nor was I aware that uh, there was a central business architecture committee but things looked wonderful downtown I mean it's been decades since I felt compelled to pull out a camera and start taking pictures like a tourist uh, I think <laughs> you're all you're doing wonderful work uh, we're grateful for your time and I, I guess at this point if you don't have any questions for me. If you have any further thoughts about what we were talking about this evening and can relay them to Carolyn and she can get them to all of us on the, on the team, um, that would be fantastic. I'm just so happy that the city went ahead and, and did this because I was, I knew that we were trying to get the community involved in uh, preservation planning processes. And then sure enough, you know, the search that I did, the Google search that I did, they, they're saying, historical inventory and municipal building inventory, you know, is just the number one step that you have to take. So I'm grateful that the city is going for that. Great. Well, thanks for coming, Kathy. Appreciate that. Well, thank you to all of you, all of you for uh, uh, scheduling an extra meeting um, when you could have had another, uh, the rest of the summer <laughs> off. So we, we really are grateful for your help in this we feel a lot more comfortable having touched base with you at this point 
um, so that we kind of have a, a good sense of what your interests and concerns are going forward. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. You. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Um, the only other thing that I had was just sort of an update um, on scheduling. The only we may have another permit besides the continuation of the church for the September meeting, um, but I don't know yet. I should know in the next couple of days if there'll be anything else. Um, but so that means that then there'll be a meeting in the first Tuesday in September, which is right after Labor Day, <laughs> um, and then. Um, I don't know what comes after that. So just wanted to put that on the radar. Mm. I, it, I'm, I'm going to, oops, sorry. I was just going to say that I'm was, away the, the Tuesday after Labor Day. Okay. Did not be able to. Wait. And actually I am, I am also, was that, was that hearing continued to that specific day? Yes. Oh dear. Um, all right. I guess I'm going to have to make sure that I'm back. I'm, I was planning to be traveling on that Tuesday. I'll just have to we make could, sure I'm back in time. What if we if we still keep it on Zoom? Would that be easier for you? Can you do well, it I'm from afar? I'm, I, I'm going to be in a car traveling, so I probably can't do it oh. on Zoom. You have a smartphone, have a don't you? <laughs> I do, but but you know, I'm, I'm just giving well, you a hard time. I don't I don't have Wi-Fi. So <laughs> you uh, should probably I don't have confirm, Wi-Fi in the car. Confirm if that meeting's actually happening before you change your plans, Joe. Well, right. I, I can I can I'm gonna have to figure out I'm just gonna have to make sure that I'm back by the time a meeting starts. Yeah. But that, that is meeting that... isn't isn't are we a hundred percent confirmed that meeting is happening? Well, I haven't spoken with the applicants in a couple of months, um, but that was the date um, to which it was continued. Um, so I can, you know, in the next week or two, I can just touch base um, to see if they would be ready to come back. And if not, I'll let everyone know for sure. So it could potentially be a continuation again, or will this be a presentation? Well, no, it could potentially be another continuation, in which case you could probably do that with two people. <laughs> um, are, are they are they going to have an answer from the uh, Community Preservation Act Committee by then? Well, they're supposed to be going back the, in the um, this month in August. Um, I don't know if the date's been set yet. Because uh, I. If they don't have an answer from that committee, then they're definitely going to want to continue it, aren't they? Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, and that's all I have for tonight. But thank you um, for coming on. Okay. Um, I want to the meeting. apologize for getting there late. I have for some reason I had trouble opening the the link, but I finally got it open. But I wanted oh, to say congratulations okay. on your appointment to uh, oh, your thanks, new position. Joe. Yeah, I um, want to Oh, thanks. <laughs> do you have a, you an official director? Yes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> do you have an, You got the job? Do you have a Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're lucky that you don't read the paper. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You were you were mentioning you're like I know you all read the paper, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> you have to spoon feed me everything. So they, are you going to have a ceremony where, like, you have a ukulele song to uh, yeah. actually get you officially appointed? <laughs> yes. You know, oh. Joe, that never crossed my mind. <laughs> I'm never, I'm never going to give up on this idea of you playing the ukulele somehow. You know, it's a, okay. Well, you're so, playing. You know, your plate is going to be a lot more full. Will you still be running this committee? Well, my plate is already, I mean, it's still doing both jobs now. So we have to backfill the whole department and get that all squared away. Um, I don't know yet. We're still trying to work through all that. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, once we can get together in person, we should have a little celebratory party for you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That would be fun. It's well-deserved.
<laughs> Thanks. Um, okay. Well, that yep. was a great way to end. <laughs> Do we formally have to end this meeting with a motion? Yeah. Do you have a motion to close the meeting? So moved. Uh, all I in second. favor? Second, thank aye, you. Aye. All in favor? Say aye. 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 <laughs> great. Thanks. All right. See you soon. Nice all to right. see you all. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.